For these next few videos, we'll be focusing entirely on the abdominal cavity. As such, we'll be looking at organs such as the liver, stomach, spleen, kidney. For this video, we will focus on the liver. Now, while I'm holding a specimen of the liver in its in-situ position, in-situ means how it appears in the actual body. This liver is located right here in the right hypochondria. What you see in front of you is the anterior surface. The roof on top is also known as the diaphragmatic surface because it's right underneath our diaphragm, the primary muscle of respiration. To the side, because this surface contacts the ribs, this is your costal surface. Now we want to turn it around. This is entirely your back posterior surface. And you can see all these different impressions here on the lower side. This is your visceral surface because it's in contact with all the different visceras, like the colon and the kidney. Anatomically, the liver is divided into two lobe, uh, four lobes. In front of you, you can only see two of them, the larger right one and the comparatively smaller left one. In the center, you can see this falciform ligament attached. This is part of the peritoneum. Keep in mind that the whole liver is covered with peritoneum, a shiny membrane which lines the abdominal cavity, except for one small area on the, behind the right lobe. This is the bare area where there is no peritoneum. And you can see if I were to pull on the edges of the peritoneum on the margin, you can see how this peritoneum is peeling off very nicely. The peritoneum covers the entire liver, forms the coronary ligaments on the right and the left side, and as they attach to the diaphragm on top, they form the triangular ligaments, which is not readily appreciable here. Aside from the falciform ligament, there is a very thick cord passing right at its inferior margin. This thick cord, it's more easier to appreciate if you were to feel it, is known as the ligamentum teres, the round ligament of the liver. This was originally the umbilical vein in the fetal life, but then becomes fibrosed and becomes a thick cord. There's nothing much else to see in the front side, so I'm now turning the liver to its back surface. Here we can finally see all four lobes of the liver. Once again, the right lobe, the left lobe, this one right over here is the caudate lobe. And you can see it is adjacent to this blue venous structure. You can see this giant opening here. This is the inferior vena cava. All the food we eat is absorbed into the portal circulation. It enters into the liver and through the hepatic veins finally enters the inferior vena cava where it enters the heart. Let's put a blue pin here so that you can easily remember. This is the inferior vena cava. And if you were to see up close inside, you can even see certain branches of the hepatic veins entering into the inferior vena cava. Now, aside, this is the caudate lobe. There is a small fissure between the left lobe and the caudate lobe. In this fissure, if I were to pass a white needle in between this, this is where we have the passage of a ligament known as the ligamentum venosum. In the fetal life it was the uh, vein, but now over here it becomes a ligament. It's a pretty, pretty tightly stuck inside and I don't want to tear this thing apart, so let's leave it in there. And here is the fourth lobe, the quadrate lobe. Quadrate meaning four-sided, one, two, three, four-sided. And just like the cordia is beside the inferior vena cava, the quadrate lobe is right behind the gallbladder. Let's put a green one here, because you know, bile is usually greenish in color. You can see how this gallbladder is having, sending a cystic duct all the way up right over here. For the opening of the cystic duct, let's use a very thin green pin. And here, I'm passing an open, a pin through that opening. Here I hope you can appreciate the opening of the cystic duct. That's where the bile comes out and enters into common bile duct. So we can see two different visceras over here. Well, we can see the gallbladder and we can see the inferior vena cava on top. Overall this region is known as the porta hepatis. Here we have basically three different structures entering this region. One is obviously the common bile duct and then you can see a larger wide bore opening that one is for the portal vein the smaller one is actually for the hepatic artery and here I'm passing a red pin through the hepatic artery right over here 
And it's, again, it's really small and you'll have to really look closely to see this. You can see how that red pin is passing through a small opening. That is your hepatic artery. The larger one on the side, I'll use a blue pin. Uh, let's use a purple one instead. I will pass a purple one through the portal vein. Once again, as I said, all the blood from the portal circulation, which absorbs the nutrition from our gut, passes through the liver for processing, and from there it enters into the hepatic veins, and finally the inferior vena cava to enter into the heart. So these were this was the portal hepatis, and all these three comprise the portal triad. Aside from that, the only thing worth mentioning is the impressions on the kidney of the liver. Here on the right side, we have the colic impression on the bottom and on top, very close to the bare area is the impression for the right kidney. On the left side, we have the impression for the esophagus and the gastric impression as well. This was the liver and normally, some of you may be wondering if the liver can really get this large. There are certain livers which are even larger due to deposits of the fatty material and fatty liver, and there are some livers, livers which are really, really small and shrunken. Those are cirrhotic livers. So they can, they're really dynamic when it comes to size, but the shape overall remains the same. Thank you, much, thank you so much for joining us for this video. Until next time, we'll be looking at other viscera of the abdominal.